Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Zeba, and I'm really excited to share with you today different tools and techniques you can use to clean out your closet this year. I just recently went through my own closet clean out. It's such a great time of year to do that. It's very cathartic for the new year. And if you don't get around to it this winter, spring is right around the corner. Not only will getting dressed in the morning be so much easier and you'll feel confident as you reach into your closet looking for things to wear, but more importantly, you'll feel confident about your future purchases because you'll know what you like and dislike. You'll know the gaps in your own wardrobe. You'll feel good about making a purchase because you'll know that you really need it and will use it with the existing items that you have in your closet. The way I'm structuring this video is by sharing methodology into how to approach your closet, deciding what to get rid of or replace. Once you have your data points of your pile of what you're gonna be gifting or thrifting, taking lessons of what is in that pile that you can use going forward to inform your own purchasing decisions. Then I'm also sharing a couple of tools and gadgets that have really helped me to elevate my closet and to also make finding things a little bit easier. And then finally, you don't wanna miss this at the end of the video where I'll be showing you how to merchandise your closet so that getting dressed in the morning will be even easier because you'll be able to tell what you have and what goes with what. As you start up this methodology, you wanna have a couple of different areas while you clean. First of all, you wanna have your gift or thrift pile. I would have your closet purgatory pile. What the closet purgatory is, it's items that don't fit or maybe are designer, but don't fit in your lifestyle. Things that you really don't wanna let go of for a really good reason, but you're not really wearing them, but you also don't wanna gift or thrift them or discard them. That's what that's there for. I would limit that closet purgatory to 12 items. You don't wanna end up with 200 pieces in that closet purgatory. And then the other pile that you want to develop is the garbage bag pile. And the garbage bag pile is not going in the trash. What the garbage pile is doing, it's a potential gifting bag. For example, sometimes you have these pieces that do not serve you anymore. They don't fit, you don't barely like them, but you have an emotional connection for whatever reason, have not gotten rid of it. Let's call it the emotional baggage one. Very appropriate. You're going to put everything in that garbage bag, or it can be a plastic tin if you don't want to go very lowbrow. You're going to tell yourself, I'm going to hold on to it for a year. And if I do not miss it, I'm going to gift it or thrift it or whatever you want to do with it. It's not in the closet purgatory. It's not like it doesn't have a lot of hope, but you've got some weird connection with it. You don't want to let it go. Put it in a plastic bag see what happens after a year. Do you miss it? Are you going through the, are you going to rummage through the, through the garbage bag looking for the stuff that you put in there? No, you're not going to. This will be really helpful in setting up your initial closet purge. First thing you want to start putting in these four piles are things that you haven't worn for four to five years. I'm not even talking one or two. I'm just saying four to five and you're saying, oh, I don't have anything like that. Go in your closet right now. You will be mortified to see how many things you haven't worn in four to five years. That's very low hanging fruit. What haven't you worn? The next thing that you wanna sort out in your piles are things that don't fit anymore. In this category, there's a lot of pieces that you will wanna put in your closet purgatory, right? Maybe a designer item that you got on sale that didn't quite fit, or maybe a very special occasion thing that doesn't fit, something that's very emotionally charged, but you still wanna wear it and you can kind of picture yourself wearing it at some point. Give yourself a couple, two, three pieces that don't fit anymore to put in the purgatory, but otherwise put your emotional baggage bag or put it in your gift or thrift. By the way, if you're finding this helpful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I would love to help serve you in your styling and wardrobe needs for 2024. I cover fashion and styling videos. I post my daily outfits on LTK, so you can also find my outfits there. The third thing you wanna think about putting in your piles are things that don't serve you anymore. Sometimes we had a complete lifestyle change. Maybe you used to work corporate, now you work from home, you started your own business, or you're a new mom and you've taken some time off and you're just in leggings. We have lifestyle changes all of the time and we really saw this during the pandemic where most of our lifestyles really, really changed. Is your wardrobe serving you? Also, have you relocated? Maybe you don't live in an area where you need some things anymore. I went through that too over the last couple of years where I was living between Chicago, Florida, and New York and it really threw me for a loop and I had some items that were still hanging on from Florida. I'm in upstate New York, I'm usually covered in snow, no need for those things on a regular basis. So taking a look at your lifestyle, your climate, and also your extracurricular activities, which are so important. If you have amazing social plans, like you have tennis, or you love doing dinner and night out with your girlfriend on a regular basis, so that kind of plays into it. You really have to look at your lifestyle holistically and say, these are items that I need, and also be honest what you're not anymore. Along with that is personal style and how has it evolved? For example, maybe you went crazy with Barbie core and you're full of fuchsia and hot pink, or maybe you used to be very goth and now you're quite luxury. Who knows? I've been through so many fashion eras myself that 
it really reflected that in my massive clean out that I did. I was able to purge about a third of my closet, which was really, really hard because I've been doing fashion blogging and content creation for the last seven years. So before that, I was already very much a fashion girl in terms of like investing in items myself and also emotional about them. So like I was kind of carrying my, my clothes around with me from all eras and locations of my life, like all the times that I've moved, all the different years and professions that I've been in my life. Like I was still carrying Nana Republic suit from 2005 when like, you know, I was working in corporate America. What does your personal style reflect right now? And really honoring that and embracing. So now we have these four piles. These four piles contain data about ourselves, what we like and don't like, also what we should and should not purchase next. In these clothes that you have discarded during the different filters, you wanna take a look at common threads. Is there a color or pattern type of style that you kind of seen come through time and time again? What is the common thread that you're finding amongst all of these clothes? The other thing to inform your purchasing decisions is are there items that are duplicates? For example, I saw a few categories of clothes that I have bought several times over and I had three tuxedo blazers that were all in fine shape. One of them still had a tag on it and I just finished getting one this last fall in 2023 that was a tuxedo blazer that had an uncanny resemblance to the two that I already had in the closet. I think that when you do this kind of exercise, what helps you develop a mental inventory because I did not remember I had those jackets. Obviously, I really like them, but seeing those duplicates too, even if they're not necessarily in your in your gift thrift purgatory or or emotional baggage piles you want to keep them it's really good to assess that you have three tuxedo blazers you have five different slip skirts that are all in the same shape so you'll feel more empowered next time you go out there and even if it's a good deal and it's an investment item it's perfect quality you can say to yourself you know what i already have a couple of those in my closet that i can wear and it's not going to change the silhouette it's not going to make me more stylish and really knowing and embracing that about yourself so that you can save money and also of course for sustainability which is so so important which leads me to my next point some of the things that you'll notice in these piles is perhaps the quality of clothing that you saw coming through when you decided to put them in those piles and taking a look at the quality for example quick ways to be able to discern if you have a quality item is is the inside as nice as the outside so if you turn the item inside out does the inside look as beautiful as the outside? If the answer is yes, you have a quality piece. Is it natural fibers like cotton, wool, linen? Those items I would be surprised unless they don't fit or don't fit your lifestyle. I would be surprised if they're in your pile because they usually age a lot better and you tend to wear them more because they're more comfortable. They're usually more classic wardrobe staples. The other thing to keep in mind determining if something is worth your money is did you wear it at least a couple dozen times? Did you wear it 20 to 40 times? If the answer is no and you wore things maybe three or four times, then that was a waste of money. It's reading the label, checking out what it's made out of, trying to stay away from synthetic materials as much as possible, checking out is the inside as beautiful as the outside? Did you wear it a couple dozen times? Do they tell you where it was made and how it was made? These kinds of filters will help you along with the data points that you have in your four piles determine more confidently what you should purchase next. Now, in terms of the nitty gritty of different tools and how to actually organize your closet once you have these four piles. So to recap, your gift or thrift, you know, to either put it on Poshmark or something like the Real Real gifting, you can give it away to so many different places your emotional baggage bag, which you're going to keep for a year, and then your closet purgatory, which you're just going to leave out to the side. And then when you do this exercise again in a year, you'll be able to determine was that supposed to be in there or not. Once you have the remaining clothes, something that really helped me was to organize my clothes through category. So dresses, blazers, bottoms, skirts, because then I know where everything goes. The knits, making sure that I don't hang them up because they start to get really bad with the hangers and fold them. Disclaimer, I am not aesthetic girl. Even though I did work retail many years, I'm never going to be the person that does the perfect fold. I'm also never going to be color coded. I create so much content and I usually move through my clothes so quickly that for me just to have my clothes hung up is a big win. There is no way that I'm going to be able to color coordinate my clothes. Does that help? Yes, it does. And, and as a reminder, don't forget to stay to the end of the video because I'll show you how to merchandise your clothes seasonally so that you always know what to wear. And this is more of where I play around with colors and tones, not so much in my overall closet. And so the first tool that really helped me is a shoe rack by Amazon that's very easy to put together. I'm able to put in there our shoes that I use a lot every day. And then this here, this bag here is also stuff that I use very regularly, but 
it's a little bit nicer to look at than the Amazon rack. The other thing that really helped elevate my closet was by getting a light also on Amazon that lights up your closet in the back. I still have to finish my other racks, but relatively inexpensive. And if you have a shelf where you put your bags or your shoes, it instantly elevates how they look. They're also sensor activated, so you don't even have to remember to turn them on or off. Next, let's talk about handbags. A couple of years ago, I had an intern who was very young and she loved the Kardashians and she used to tell me, Ziba, let's organize your bags the Kylie Jenner way. And I had no idea what that meant, but apparently it's when you face all your bags forward versus piling them side to side. And sometimes the side to side, if you have a lot of bags is really convenient. But as you can see here, I've tried to have them all facing forward because it's more aesthetic and also helps me remember like when I just see this, like, oh, right, I have that, that Shirley bag back there, or, or I have my Gucci Diana. Like I'm able to more remember than if they're side by side, it's more inspirational that way. And then you can also like kind of stack them this way. So they are facing forward, but you're still able to stack them behind. The other thing that really helps is clear bins so that when you don't have, when you run out of room or hangers, and maybe it's a seasonal thing, having a clear bin so that you know not to forget about it. You can see what's in there in case you need it and have it be somewhere visible. And then finally, jewelry organizers are very, very helpful, especially if you love to accessorize. I recently got a jewelry organizer that has a mirror that I'll make sure to link one below that is very similar. Also on Amazon that has a mirror and then you open it up and it can just organize all your jewels. And as promised, how to merchandise your closet so that getting dressed in the morning is so much easier. I would recommend that you do this method maybe monthly. A seasonal array of your clothes. It's all things that fit, that are seasonal, that you like, that you know fit your current lifestyle that you can easily see. So if you don't have a wardrobe rack like this, you don't need one. With a new space in your closet, you'll be able to do this. I'll also put a wardrobe rack that you can check out on Amazon. It's really inexpensive and it just might be a good investment if you're looking just to organize your life a little bit more. I would think of it as like buying plastic bins or organizers. You don't have to be a fashion person or a content creator to need or have use for one of these. I think it's very, very functional. You can see how much more color coordinated it is because these are the colors that I'm wearing this season. So for example, if I have if I have these brown trousers and these white trousers, I hang them like this, I'm gonna put them next to pieces that lot that I would consider wearing them with. For example, this blazer, this cashmere sweater, this silk button down. Next to this silk button down are some trousers in either regular material, these are my favorite ones from Suzanne, and faux leather trousers. Sweaters that I would consider wearing them with is a, this cardigan, this blazer, I would consider wearing this blazer with this sweater dress, this slip skirt with v-neck button down. So you can kind of see the methodology. You pair things by the one item, whether you lead with the top or the bottom, and then put things around it that you will consider wearing them with so that when you wake up Monday morning and you're like, okay, what do I wear? You're like, okay, I know it works. I have my pieces here. Go ahead and do my faux leather pants with this silk shirt with this blazer. You can more readily assess what you have at any given time and what you're reaching for time and time again. Almost like organically creating a capsule wardrobe for yourself without the stress of like capsule and just putting more things that you are wearing a lot this month or this season and then having it be really easy to combine because you have already vetted these combinations, you know they work, and then you don't have to think that hard. When you think about this concept, I have been naturally doing this concept in all of my seasonal capsules that I usually have on this rack because it helps me do my job better. I hadn't thought of it as quote unquote a merchandising technique. I heard of this merchandising method from a fellow content creator who's in Chicago, Anna Lazzarini. We know each other in real life. She's a student at my, at my fitness studio in Chicago. Check out my last video on how to style skinny jeans in 2024 that are chic, relevant, and timeless classics. If this helped you and you had fun with me today, please hit the subscribe button. I would love to continue serving you and hope you have a great day.